So, have you ever heard of a challenge run? Oh, you know, those popular videos where you have to beat a game in a certain way? Like Gran Turismo 4 of only Japanese cars, Borderlands with trash weapons, and the famous Nuzlocke run in Pokemon. Simply put it, make the game a lot more interesting with your own set of rules. So why am I talking about this? Well, it's because I'm making my own challenge run, starting with a game I've been playing for a while and it's one of my favorites. Cyberpunk 2077. I've already beaten this four times already, before considering making the season finale of Lost Legends. It's that good. In this run, it's going to be challenging. Can I beat Cyberpunk 2077? as a samurai. No guns, no cyberware, just me, a katana with throwing knives, and a 15 hour game. This is going to be a long one. For my build I decided to stack my points where it counts. Perks related to guns, cyberware, and cars are useless here. So we focus on the mix of four trees, but since reaching level 60 only maximized three, I decide to capitalize Reflex with Tailwind for movement and Slaughterhouse for Katana combat. For tech, I only focus on Pyromania, not for tossing them boom booms but for Flash Sail with more smoke and flashbangs. Cool on the other hand will focus on stealth movements and perks related to throwing knives. I don't touch a single point on intelligence since that requires cyberware. Lastly for body. It focuses on my general health and increased my survival with Adrenaline Rush. However, in spoilers, none of those trees ever made it to max level once I finished it. I never re-rolled them either. So let's start the game with a Nomad, but I also want to go for Valerie, as Mizu from Blue Eye Samurai. It's a great show, I recommend it. This was the first 5 minutes of gameplay by the way. Finding the perfect shape. Glad the game adds the option to cover up the nudity, but I can't change the other adjustments. The worst part is finding the samurai drip. I cataloged the clothing from the wiki just to simply try my best to get the costume down to a T. Well, get it down in cyberpunk form. For one more feature, I throw in a mod. More directly, just to replace some offending ads. So there's far less MILF guards jump scaring me with their moaning and exposed nipples that'll get this video nuked. So enough rambling, let's play. Electric coupling module. You said it was nothing serious when I came in. You said you were sure. Well, this is where the run ends as a nomad. But for real though, I think the prologue doesn't count as this is the only moment where we don't tap into the samurai stuff until a little later in the game. That and this is where we meet our friend Jackie. Get the package, head to the city gates, bribe the guard, and Arasaka Escalade's coming in our position. So I whip out my nerf strong arm to send those corporal rats to their graves, where they rightfully belong. We got away, look at the contraband, and notice that Evolution Archive from the Turok video made a cameo here. Then a cutscene, where the Jackster and I assert our dominance, and later raid a scav hideout to rescue Sandra Dorset. One problem. No guns. And so I let Jackie do most of the work for me. I just jump in, fist swinging like I'm brick, save door set, shot some gangbangers from my car, and head home to sleep. Also acquire my equipment, which is the black unicorn and a throwing knife. They're decent starting weapons. Black unicorn in particular doesn't affect tax speed when I'm out of stamina. I think I might have caught something when I jacked into that Corpo's Biomon. 
I know a neurovirus or... I need to see Vic. Let him tell me what's got my head reeling and my stomach churning. Okay, let me take you. I brought you a ride. Throw on some threads, meet me downstairs. So, the next hour does involve some questing. Met my favorite character in the game, Victor Vector. Outfitted me with some new cyber eyeballs, plus armor and new cyber hands. Put my samurai skills to good use on some thugs. Got a one star wanted level. Met Dexter Deshawn, who gave me info about the Flathead and Evelyn Parker, the one who commissioned the heist. After that, I was left to my own devices. Jackster, talk to Dex. <laughs> yeah, Gordito's a big deal. Literally a nod. Claimed to want to check our pro cred, but to me it feels more like he tangled us up with Maelstrom and Militech. There's this combat bot military prototype. Maelstrom clipped it, then Dex paid to take it off their hands just before the gang goons had a switch up in management. I right, heard about that. Royce versus Brick. Hostile takeover. About sums it up. Dex wants us talking to Royce. Gave the deeds of some Militech agent too, but don't know how much help she stands to be. <laughs> then there's the other thing. Gotta meet the client who put the job on the table, Evelyn Parker. You? Well, what's Dex gonna do? Ride around in his limo, chat chicks up on the hollow? Parker wants to meet someone on the crew. Dex gave me the nod. They must know what he's doing. So, how you wanna play this? Maelstrom or Parker? What's first? Parker. Think I ought to see her first. See what she's like, what she's after. Orale. In that case, I'll hit the all foods. Put my nose to the ground. It's the ground. It's the luego. I can't afford to pay off Vic yet, so I did a side quest involved the ping. But realizing that I wasn't supposed to have my cyberware, then again, this is just a minor quest with fellow enemies, I find a ripper dog to get rid of them. Except my eyeballs. Can't take them out except replace them. Then I gotta do some more side questing for Scratch to buy my drip, which I could find in several areas like Kabuki and Japantown. The first gig in town is a thievery quest, where I steal a van. Bikes only, so I skip it. Try the other gig with the doctor, and another one to steal data. The only ranged weapon I have is the knife, and it works wonders as it could flatline gongs quite easily. Since the lack of armor, I need to retreat, take cover, heal, and make sure my aim is true. I also got ambushed by the bastards. Barely standing now! <laughs> After that, I went to Lizzie's bar to meet Evelyn Parker and Judy. Used a brain dance helmet. Adam Smasher called Parker a flashlight. You look like a cut of fuckable meat, are you? Evelyn, she. I felt her fear. Found the sacred key, and then head out to Gabuki to grab a piece of my samurai drip, which is a conical hat. Head out to meet Jackie at the All Foods factory. Met Dum Dum, hit the weird shit, talked to Royce, KO'd and looted him, and caused chaos while securing the flathead. Tried the free brick, but I realized I don't have the combination after disarming the bomb. So, leave him to die, exit the factory, call Dex, and meet him in the afterlife, along with T-Bug in the flesh. 
get on board in the Delamain and head to Compeki Plaza to grab the relic trip from Yori's penthouse. Entered the plaza, saw Hideo Kojima, infiltrated the inner workings with a flathead, neutralized some lone redded power mod, took to Kongu, and finally got the package. Had a staring contest with Smasher through the TV screen, Yori Nobu off the century old emperor, t bug got cooked, Jackie was wounded, and since I can't shoot, I resort to fisticuffs until one of the socket ninjas drop a weapon for me. Until I realized I could craft a katana and a couple knives. Jackie and I sneaked our way to the elevator, avoided the big robot boss, took the cab, and shot down some drones. Jackie succumbed to his wounds after he gave me the biochip for Dex. Okay, how come every playthrough of this doesn't show the chip given to me? Mr. Wells has passed. Where shall I take his remains? What? The Excelsior package provides for the disposal of passenger remains free of charge. I merely require a destination. He'd want to be with his family. Mr. Wells' closest blood relative is Guadalupe Alejandra Wells, proprietress of the El Coyote Coho Bar. I will make sure to deliver him safely. Mr. Deshaun awaits you in room number 204. See you in the major leagues, Jack. Anyways, got out of the cab, looked at some foreshadowing, sold my useless junk, entered the motel, watched the news, and Dex decided to cut my life short by braining me with a pistol. And then title card. Never been I better. can't let you on! Sure don't look it. Hey, hey, we're chill! Of course you're high. Given the circumstances, I was shot in the face. And not only it took me back to the past, but the past of a rocker boy named Johnny Silverhand, Portrayed by Keanu Reeves. The weight of the world, the prize of a fighter. He stormed to Aristaga Tower by helicopter with a ragtag of allies to boot, including Rogue. He went pop, pop, pop watching Gooners drop, planted the bomb, uploaded a manifesto, and met pre borged out ogre Adam Smasher who got the better hand of him. Smasher. Told you, Johnny boy. Told you I'd end you someday. He was wheeled out by medics, and then interrogated as I look at the mushroom cloud of the tower he raided as no more. Saburo told someone to begin the process, which is a device known as Soul Killer, which turned Johnny's consciousness into an engram being written on a biochip which is in my character's head as we speak. And you, who are you? Oh. 
I woke up in the landfill, climbed my way out, and crawled to safety, until Dex spotted me. Then I witnessed Takamura, Saburo's former bodyguard, took away my revenge by taking Dex out of the question. He was hunted by Sokka ninjas. I whipped out a gun and started blasting. I blew up their bikes, we crashed the car, finished off the one ninja, called a cab, and made it to Vix. The shape I was in is like the band who performed Money for Nothing, in dire straits. Vic fixed me up good, but he told me the news that the clock is ticking, as the biochip is taking over my psyche, and my genes, and memes. In other words, my consciousness is being replaced by the relic. Then to my apartment, wheeled by Misty, I confessed to her about my homie Jackie, she gave me pills, plus a lucky charm, and I doze off. During slumber, Keanu Reeves showed up, asking for smokes, and called me an OnlyFans model. The fuck kind of joy toy are you supposed to be? Fucking ghost off! He's willing to escape until realizing that he can't, and he could take control of me. After an internal struggle and threats of a Brett's a blowjob, I took them blue pills to calm him down. Woke up in the shower, and Takamura is waiting for me in the diner. <laughs> Before I head to the diner, I magically got myself a card to use the Metro, which was introduced in the latest 2.1 update. Takamura and I chatted, asking where Evelyn is and the whereabouts of a man named Anders Hellman, the creator of the relic. He left to make some plans. Johnny came in and talked to me about some things involving Rogue. I looked at some unusual graffiti, contacted Judy, and head to Lizzie's to talk about Evelyn. She is at Clouds, located in Japantown, and so I head there by dash jumping, also known as Kangaroo Velocity. Hello. The name is Hans. Mr. Hans. If you're looking for work in Pacifica, I'm the man to call. I'm V. No, nice to meet you. All right. How very nice to meet you. If you have business, you know my number. I got a call for another one of my favorite cyberpunk characters, Mr. Hans who unfortunately shares the same nickname as a zoophile who died after having his rectum resized by a horse. Sadly, he is less involved in the main story, but if I allow myself to do Phantom Liberty, then you'll see why he's one of my favorites. Realized I should have done the hero's side quest first, but I got to visit Wakako for that Sandra Dorset stuff, then find a shop to acquire the breastplate, which adds a plus 10 to armor. I head to Clouds, pick someone, and cut my therapy short faster than signing in a new social media site and never use it. Anyways, watch this guy finish taking a piss, take him out, and took his access card. Head upstairs, talk to Tom about Parker, do some sneaky salamander stuff, took a goon out, and talk to Woody Woodman. I said that stealth was an option, and I used it. Besides, samurais don't come in for a fight. The fight comes for the samurai. Sometimes, I think. Anyways, after a chat with Woodman, I coughed, Johnny told me about Mikoshi and Alt Cunningham, called Judy to update on Evelyn, and head to Jig Jig Street to do some business with a shady ripper doc known as Fingers. I interrupted his procedure, criticized his patchwork, interrogated him, punched him in his pedal stash, seized Cottonmouth, stole his butt plug, and called Wakako about the death's head moth BD Fingers told me about. Went to the shady dealer, bought the XBD, and watch a snuff film. We know the location and I'm heading there with a sword, some flashers, and knives for some range. Got me Arata, slish slash and dash my way through the facility, rescue Evelyn Parker, and be at Judy's apartment to not only see some BDs she recorded, but knowing who she's working for. It's the Voodoo Boys from Pacifica. I called Mr. Hands about them. They wanted Johnny's engram for Alt Cunningham. I decided to buy my time, bought some twins, and head to the Kabuki drip shop to buy my warm race Neil tax. 
called Mama Wells for the funeral and Jackie's bike, head back to Japantown to get the shades, West Wind for the turtleneck, and Little China for Exo Jacks, which I had to re-roll a few days until the shop sold me those. Another thing I should do is buy fresh new weapons. I soldiered on, leveled up, head to the afterlife, paid Rogue 15,000 eddies to progress the story, buy my time with Uncle Vec to pay off the debt, got some new cyber eyeballs, did a minor gig, died and do it again, and head back to the afterlife to do the ghost town quest. And I meet the rowdy hothead known as Pan Am. Why are we at the hospital? Might not come after us again. Uh, I, I can't. Say something, Shep. Anything. What do you mean you're not coming? Hello? You're coming, dog. You'll be here in five minutes flat off. This Pan Am? Be here. Be who? Be where? How did you even get this number? From Rogue. Oh, great. Fuck. Where's that old warhorse want to kick me now? This thing between you and Rogue, couldn't care less. Got a job for you. Good, but I'm overextended at the moment. With the merch in your car? Getting him back? I can help with that. The rail freight yard on Benita Street. The one hugging the city line. We'll meet there. See ya. Pan Am Palmer. Earlier, she lost her ride and her loot by some rival nomads known as the Race. She didn't have a good day, and I'm willing to help to get her stuff back, even if it's a matter of life or death. That in return, she'll help me take down a Kang Tao convoy with Ender's helmet inside. So, I ride in this cyber wagon, she ran over my homie's arch, met Mitch and Scorpion of the Alticados, grabbed supplies, and head to the ghost town of Rocky Ridge. Got the power running, killed some Raffins, reclaimed Pat Ann's souped up Thornton, and she wanted to do some unfinished business with Nash, the man who got her into this mess. We raided their hideout. These flashbangs seems useless and I got my ass killed. Do the raid again with smoke grenades, hit a guy through a small gap of cover, fought douchebags abusing their sand devastands, tangle with Nash, and Pan Am surprisingly put up a fight. After the raid, we head to the Sunset Motel, stole my crap, look at another piece of graffiti, looked at Pan Am's booty cheeks, drank some beers, and increased my ego with the bathroom mirror. Damn, I'm looking good. Sometime later, Pan Am concocted a plan to take the AV down, and it's simple as an EMP blast. We stopped at a bridge for a turd section on some debris, head to the power station, shot down some drones, overloaded the generators, head to a safe spot, and pressed the button to make things go kaboom. Now! Boom. There she is. Shit! What's, What's going happening? on? God damn it all. Great. Bullseye! The EMP hit the convoy, but said convoy is EMP resistant. So Pan Am whip out the only rocket launcher in the game to take it down. That's how you do it! It's losing altitude! We got the bastard! Let's go! Mitch and Scorpion via radio is going to check out the crash site, but Pan Am can't reach them with the interference. More drones are after us. My turret's jammed, Pan Am fixes our only means of defense and got shot. I told her to stay, delve some robots, died twice, fought the big whack off drone with a throwing knife, and saved Mitch. Scorpion didn't make it though, but I took his Sanchez in pursuit. Pan Am and I followed the trail, I ran over a turret, killed some Kangs, and trail leads to a gas station full of more Kang Tal operatives, and I need to be careful on this if I wanted to get Hellman. Drones, patrols, definitely set up shop. I see. Yeah. Luffy, yeah. see that? The pumps look pretty good. Not what you find in the pumps. The bastards are yeah. yeah. Well, not soon. God damn it! Uh. Uh.
did that! I got the man who holds the key, who sowed the seeds, and got what I need. Knife the one Kang to avoid witnesses, told Anders, nothing personnel, kid, and meet my new Chumbas outside as they better call Saul for this. Time to interrogate the architect of the relic killing me. The only thing I could Woo hoo, do. it's bargaining time. Hellman handed me some relic documents. Takamura stopped by, I hurled outside, learned about Johnny's motives, and then we ride. And stop at the shop for a stained anti-puncture coat. Once I was back in town, Judy called me to meet at her place, found Evelyn dead in the bathtub, knowing she... quit the game. Judy told me about the virtues recorded by Parker, talking about women's abuse. She wanted revenge on that man, but not now, or in this run. Are you V? Please, step in the vehicle. Okay. I got a call from the Paralyses, who wanted to cover the mystery of Mayor Ryan's death. I looked inside the raw BD, saw a cyber cycle attack, and our dirty Harry of the cyberpunk world dispatched a fool. That man is River Ward, and he's a rare good cop in Night City. Jeff and Liz sent me River's number, called him, and meet at a diner about Ryan's death. We do some detective work, talk to a CI named Neil, and the psycho's former employer, discussing that man's motives. Ha! <laughs> Looking for reason in that whack job? Probably thought Ryan was talking to him through the TV, promising all sorts of shit, and ceasing to give a fuck. Look, I told you what I think. In Horvath's world, everybody was out to get him. Lucius Ryan was out to fuck him, then get him. Ryan's death was written off as some sort of implant malfunction in his home. But the day of his death took place in a recently abandoned club known as the Red Queen's Race. This little compound is animals' territory, and animals are these roided up beastmen who would fuck me up if I'm not careful. It makes it harder when I don't have a gun, lightly armored, and, well, no cyberware. I eventually got inside the club's secret entrance, had my boy River Ward to help me deal with these savages, and found the clear video evidence that his detective friend was covering up the story. I also found a BD helmet I wanted to see what weird kinks the former mayor was into. And those kinks were being brain blasted, which is the very thing he was killed. Probably too embarrassing to tell the public about that. River confronted his friend, but he needed to sort things out and told me to head to the Paralysis' home to tell him what happened. Johnny told me not to tell him a single thing and I did just that. Politics isn't my game anyways. I could get my tight samurai cheeks clapped by a cop, but not in this run. My next journey is Takamura. Head to this waterfront to discuss with Hanako's bodyguard, Oda. He rejected, and since that bitch Oda won't be joining us, we decided to discuss on infiltrating the parade. I upgraded my Kaikens to Blue Rarity, and told Goro to go out and recon the industrial park, while I had my business in Pacifica. Uh, no, seriously, that's it for the subchapter. It's a good thing you answered. I could probably use your help. Probably. Fine. I could really use your help. Can we meet? Just tell me when and where. You don't know how good it is to hear that? Swing by the Aldecaldos camp. I'll explain it all. The Aldecaldos? Thought you parted ways. Oh, look, it's a long story. Just hurry over. I'm here. Besides heading to Pacifica, Pan Am called me to start the whole quest line where I'll eventually get the true Nomad ending. I would say no, but where's the fun in that? I decided to do it for the sake of XP and street cred. Saul got himself kidnapped by the Wraiths, who are holed up in some concrete factory. Pan Am and I head to the compound to save the leader of the Alucados, 
and all that before a massive sandstorm hits in. Oh, by the way, this is the first time I used the tagging function, which is very handy when it comes to stealth. I also died a few times because, well, simple, I, I was outnumbered and outgunned, obviously. I did made it through though. I skipped a lot of dialogue because I realized I was running out of time before I leave the house and head for work. After that quest is done, Pan Am gave me her copy of Overwatch and ride off. Since I was in the Badlands, I decided to kill some gonks in its gas station, buy my Akira bike, and pay respects to Dexter Deshawn. My man, Dexter Deshawn. How's that quiet life working out for you now, Chum? I looted his gun that used Eddie's as ammunition, and gazed at Rache Bartmoss's freezer. This is my toughest challenge, and we're heading to Pacifica to meet Maman Brigitte of the Voodoo Boys. Before I get to her, this man named Placide wanted me to do a gig involving the Grand Imperial Mall, loaded with members of the animals, in one minivan, or the, the Camionet. If you remember the part I infiltrated the Red Queen's race, I get shredded if I'm not careful. In my normal playthroughs, it's ideal to do this stealthily, and if you got caught, well, I get rocked by them. A lot. Hell, at one point I accidentally triggered the Sasquatch boss fight early. I didn't record my efforts, but I did reach the communist and killed every animal in the room. The van belongs to Netwatch, and the animals are there as protection. You can avoid the Sasquatch fight if you wanted to, but as penance for not recording the whole crusade of a lone samurai went on safari to these animals, I had to fight the Squatch head on. Eventually, I did defeat her, while she's getting roasted on my spicy sword. I confronted John Netwatch and he told me about the Voodoo Boys' intentions. I've already played both sides before, and I side with Netwatch since what that shithead Placide did was making me a kamikaze drone to wipe out the whole Netwatch team. I read some of that juicy cyber lore and Netwatch are these elite netrunners who are protecting the net to prevent another netpocalypse known as Data Crash, committed by net prodigy Raish Bartmoss. John Netwatch removed the malware, free Mama and Brigitte and T Neptune from their ice, and I returned to call Placia a pussy ass bitch. Now look, I have nothing against the Haitians and Voodoo Boys. But if someone forces you to jack in some unauthorized hardware, take on a gig, and end up killing you without knowing it, then you see why I hated Placide. Brigitte's the one who commissioned the heist, 
and used Evelyn Parker to set me and Jackie up to acquire the biochip in Compeki Plaza, which is in my head and time's a ticking. We head to Decrypt, which is known as the Netrunner's Crack Den and escape ourselves to the net. This part I think I bugged the game. I skipped through the dialogue because I don't need an extra 60 gigabytes of useless footage in my HDDs. In this bit, I softlocked the game. Nothing but a reboot can't fix, and we performed as planned. I'm back as the Silver Man, performing one of Samurai's concerts. Perform Alt Cunningham Lingus. Got his ass dumped, and got stabbed by a goon with a pair of mantis blades. He was saved by his ripper doc, met a journalist named Thompson, and asked if he wants to join Johnny to the Atlantis, which he obliged. So what'll it be? Coming with? Where to? Arasaka Tower. To grab Alt. Right back. Just you and me? You out of your fucking mind? Uh-huh. Come along. Let you watch from the sidelines. Seem to like doing that. Johnny went to the club, had a drink, meet up Rogue and a no-man named Santiago. Saka goons came out of the woodwork, they ate shit from Johnny's hand cannon, and got in his Porsche to deal with the pursuers in the mean streets. Johnny and company head to the tower, broke in some high security, killed Akira, blast Toshiro's head clean off, and it's too late. Alt has gone, and the media man is still recording this. The hell are you doing? Are you still rolling? <laughs> Won't change her. She's not... <laughs> You have to kill him? We gotta go. Johnny! She's dead. Well, spit it out before you burst. Wow. Were you going for Douchebag of the Year? And here I was, afraid you'd try to cheer me up. Well, what's not to like, Scout? Hmm? I talked shit to Johnny, and back to reality, or in the net, Brigitte finished her sentence. We warped to the Black Wall, all purged the net runners except me, we discussed some things, and mentioned the machine that steals people's souls and devour all their dreams. Mikoshi is one thing Johnny wants to destroy in Arasaka Tower, and Mikoshi is the key to cure my silver hand dosis. To pause this progress with a small tangent, there's a theory going around that Johnny Silverhand's engram doesn't show his true character due to the damaged ship. He doesn't give you the complete picture when it comes down to memories, like relationships with Rogue, the desire to take out Arasaka, etc. Don't take my word for it. Mike Pondsmith, the creator of the cyberpunk series, also backed this up. This explains the more action movie style approach in his segments, like his Malorian pistol is very powerful, inflated ego, and he has great health regen during gameplay. The tabletop playbooks featured Morgan Blackhand, who was only mentioned a handful of times in the final game, but was ultimately cut. Blackhand was also part of the 2023 raid of the tower to bring down Arasaka and their Soul Killer project. Silverhand was actually blasted in half by Smasher. Shayton fought him but ended up as a barely functioning biopod. And Morgan Blackhand faces off Smasher as the nuke went off. Yeah, there's a video by Laidback Gamers if you want to know about that. Now, back in the game. I woke up in the cyber crack den. All the netrunners are dead thanks to John Netwatch planting a virus on me. And I had to deal with the remaining voodoos, including Placide. Took me a few attempts, but... 
Hey, Placid. Yeah, you think I'm gonna be your disposable floor rag against these net watchers and get away with it? Oh, is that a sand devastan? Bitch, I got used to these fools when my sword could deflect shotgun blasts. <laughs> Yeah, who's the Rangyol now? I had a stroke, get angry with Johnny for this shit, and got a call with Takamura that recon is complete. Since I finished the Voodoo Boys mission, I got an unusual call with Songbird. But, according to the rules, I said that I won't do Phantom Liberty. So I told Somi like Road told Pan Am. Solve your own problems, can it oh, shit? Go fuck yourself! Yeah, the president will have to fend for herself in Dogtown. Excellent timing. How'd your recon go? I believe I have collected enough to try. The complex is well guarded, but we should manage. The float stand in the main warehouse. Your task is simple. To get inside. Uh, how? The more you quiet, the better. Friends. But you are the thief. I will not question your skills. Police! Once there, Come out you with must your hands up. the largest platform and invent it. Uh. Where are you gonna be? I will create a diversion. They should not discover our intentions. Do you know what Arasaka despises the most, confuses them? When communication fails, when they cannot talk to each other, they are first to cry. Sabotage. Konran Suruna. I'll be in touch. It's time for me to infiltrate the industrial park, and I usually take the front gate, but remember, Stealth is an option, and I'm using stealth. I got up the bridge, take out cameras, and then some goons. I went on the ground to take the easier way in, and made my way to the warehouse. This run is almost flawless. Almost. You see, I got this Sokka Ninja which I baited with a Kaiken to these explosives. I missed, so I try again to blow him up. The one other ninja is checking out the debris, as I sabotage the network, but that goon is coming back to me, so I engage a little combat. 60 to 1, the sword faces the guns. I took down several goons, but the snipers are beating me down, but those max stocks are keeping me alive while bullets are penetrating me. I managed to escape the facility and lived another day. In this part I should do the parade mission, but I decided to do some side questing. Cleaned the mean streets once more, did a few nearby gigs that doesn't involve driving a car, and of course, Pan Am called me. P, do you have a moment? Oh, gotta go. We were talking about... Need to talk? I mean, no on the moment. Can you come by the camp? I have a problem. On my way. Thanks. That's good to hear. Give me a little more intel. What's your grief? Well, it uh, would be better to... Let me guess. Saul, right? You know me well. Mm-hmm. See you soon. I head back to the Aldecados to do one thing. Steal ourselves a cyber tank. The crew is on board except for one man. Saul, who's sucking on the toes of Biotechnica. The Aldecados have good intentions since they're getting their asses beat by the wraiths, and they got intel that Militech is bringing one of their cyber tanks to some third world country. The tank is their best chance to fight back those Raffins, and I'm obliged to do so. Head to the lone train refueling tower, find the punch cards, talk about Scorpion, and at dawn, we ride to rob the Militech convoy from sending that tank to god knows where. Mission accomplished? But Saul's not pleased, 
and Pan Am put those lungs to good use. Fuck Pan Am, you can see them from miles away! You think we don't have problems enough on our hands? The Raffins could rear their heads at any moment. And now we have Militech to worry about too. Stop it! Fuck! Just shut up already! Do you want to serve corporations forever? Fine, go right ahead. In that case, we'll leave the Basilisk as a souvenir of what this family used to be. Or you know what? Maybe next time we're attacked, we'll be able to fight back! As soon as I'm done with Biotechnica, we call a family meeting to discuss this. Discuss you. Until that time, I want these trucks out of my sight. And the Basilisk? Can we put it together? Do what you want. Just get out of my sight. She'll need me again for part three. If I was playing this game as a man, I'm gonna clap her cheeks in no time. Don't deny it, you'll do that too. I am in position. The floats have started to move. After doing one thing and made a pile of tiger corpses, I head to the Japantown Parade to take out three campers and a low netrunner. A bit light on security, but... I forgot about the claymores. The whole journey is simple enough, but this is the one time dashing sent me to my doom. I fought some Sokka goons, chucked some knives at a drone, listened to a convo with Oda and Smasher, deflected shotgun blasts, and I'm gonna put that Netrunner out of commission. Until... Pull up, Harling! Been on a while. Time for a break. Fuck! Of course you did. In my previous playthroughs, that bitch Oda could be either easy or a pain to get through if you know what you're doing. I deal with him by using a good shotgun and a throwing weapon for a sandy spam. Since my shotgun is a burning sword, it took me a whopping 5 tries to get him down. One of which I was so close, and he went sicko mode on me. I had Hammerfall's Bushido in my head, but since Corporal record labels will get better of me, I gotta go for alternatives. Bitch, you live by the code, you die by the sword. Oh, and thanks for the new blade. Third strikes are always crits, but being invisible is much more useful because all hits are crits, and you can lead towards enemies. I escaped the bazaar, head to a motel, knocked four times, and confronted Hanako to make her swallow the red pill, which is your Nobu flatline his pops. The Arasaka Death Squad found our location. I fought my way out, and fled the city. Shotgun in hand, likely blasted every patron in this dump of a motel, and a proxy showed up representing the woman we kidnapped. She told us to meet her at Embers, and once that convo was done... What's up? Got a few more words about the... the porcelain cunt? Fuck! <laughs> Shit, get ready. Fuck. Johnny. You ain't dying yet. I got you. Remember that title in the video whether or not it could beat Cyberpunk as a samurai? Well, I lied. 
mostly because of the story elements, but I also used this 05 on some guys just to show you how awesome it is. It is indeed possible to beat Cyberpunk without using a gun in cyberware, most of the time. But I highly doubt that you could beat it on very hard. But that's not the point, I'm going to tell you about the endings. On my first playthrough I did the Corporal ending. Uh, you know, the one where you get Tonico and later end up in space where Keanu Reeves calls you a disappointment. That's the worst ending, and we're not going through that route. Phantom Liberty is out of the question. And so we have three different scenarios to go through. The Sun, Temperance, or the Star Endings. Since I've already witnessed the Devil, the Tower, and the Sun, we're doing the true Nomad Ending, the Star. That and Pan Am needs my help. Anybody get this thing up and running earlier? Maybe you Everything gotta... is dandy. Give me a moment. Yes! Yeah, but here's the thing. The cyber tank literally functions with two people simultaneously. That and I do break my own rules a lot. Not the several morality rules I've set in stone, but the whole scheduling and such. Enough about my life. How about we show those wraiths our fancy cyber tank? Those pack of gonks don't stand a chance. So I was impressed, I was satisfied, and the whole quest line is over. For now. Pan and I talked, I coughed, and ended up somewhere since the avocados moved camp. Just north from the attack. Sol and Pan Am gave me an offer to join the clan. Told them I loved to, but I had personal business with that bile chip killing me slowly. The Silverman's curse is gonna be the death of the Samurai V. But Sol told me to give him a call if there's some help in need. At this point, I'm at level 30, with level 38 street cred. At some point long before I wiped the wraiths, I got the knife known as the Headhunter, which is the only iconic knife I've used. It marks enemies and deals 200% headshot damage on said marked enemies and returns the blade instantly. For weapons, I got Jinchumaro as my sword. Headhunter and Neurotoxin Knife with Boomerang Mod as my Rage Knives. I got blue flashbangs and a purple max stock for my equipment. For my skills, only Body has reached Tier 3 with Painkiller and Associated Skills for Regen purposes, and Adrenaline Rush for more HP and Temp HP. For Reflex, I have Slippery to mitigate damage, Parkour for faster climbing, Dash for more movement speed, Along with Can't Touch This, that has 100% mitigation while dashing. Lead and Steel along with Bullet Deflect allows me to deflect bullets, and Seeing Double improves counterattacks. On the tech side, I have Glutton for War for 5% instant recharge on my equipment, and First Aid for more recharging health items. Health Freak gives me one extra health charge, Field Medic for faster health use, and Demolition Surplus for another grenade. Lastly on Cool, I have feline footwork for mitigation, plus improved crouch movement speed, and small target for more mitigation when idly crouched. I also had killer instinct for increased stealth damage, plus gag order to delay detection once I was spotted. Lastly, Scorpion Sting adds poison damage to enemies when crit or headshots, along with parasite, accelerated toxin, and corrosion to apply poison on mechanical enemies. Oh, 
And so I stopped by at Embers, talked to Hanako about the situation. She could get me to Mikoshi easily, but both Johnny and I don't trust the corporal rat one bit. I checked out in the elevator, woke up at Vic's, and he's not happy with my condition. He and Misty gave me a few things. The pills, and a gun to... End things on your own terms. I would play Hey Man Nice Shot, but I prefer Tantor or something. I mean, you know, seppuku. Anyways, Misty took me to the roof, mulled through some shit, talked to Johnny, gazed at the Vista, and made my choice. Call my tunes from the avocados. I mean, I would do the secret finale, but I haven't done the star ending. Misty showed me some tarot card readings, my cavalry has arrived, and my chumas accepted me as one of them. They even gave me a new coat, which kind of fits to the Mizu look, albeit part of a nomad's crew. So we partied, had a few drinks, drove a modified cyber tank, and made peace. Our plan is to take on Arasaka Tower from under the foundation. It's time for me and the Alucados to go to war. Our Alicado friends have faced the risks, and there are some casualties. I blast the gates open, drove our cyber tank to the tunnels, and reached the underbelly of Arasaka. Allegedly, this part here is where Johnny's nuke was placed before it blew up. If you stop to think, it's incredible we happen to be standing right where the AHQ bomb left a huge crater. Then, isn't this place positively saturated with radiation? Who knows? Great. We do this stealthily. Snuck through the manufacturing portion, blew up gas canisters which the Sokka goons don't seem to hear, and Goomba stopped this one netrunner. I plugged Alt in, and most of the Sokka gonks die within our sight. Except the lone survivor I just dealt with. Now we reach to the gates of Mikoshi. And I know whom's coming. I entered the room, and suddenly... You can do this. Oh! Oh, the Adam Smasher comes crashing in and killed my man Saul. Before the 2.1 update, people find this final boss disappointing. I don't mind a smasher fight for the first time, even for the secret ending I got a pounding. I face the sadistic Robocop head on, and avoid missiles.
2.1 update highly improved the fight to be more tougher, hit stronger, and she sent Devastan like a bitch he is. Except the part he bugged out for me to well on him. It took me two attempts. It's all about the timing, and when's the perfect moment to dash. Yeah, a 96% machine cyborg got his cyber ass handed to an organic samurai. Why am I not surprised? I watched Samurai Jack. I gave Smasher my Arasaka steel straight to his brain, I limped my way to Mikoshi, shacked myself in, and submerged to cyberspace. Found my lucky charm, and the whole pyramid stuff comes in. Alright, update chooms, here's the thing I found that long after the run. If you call Jackie right before entering Embers, it gives you an automated message, asking you to leave a message. Knowing for a fact your homie died right in front of you at the end of the, uh, the heist. Once you defeated Smasher and entered Mikoshi, he appears on the rooftops. You and him have a heartfelt chat, which is him recycled lines from early in the game, but more fluently. How the hell are you in Mikoshi? Hit the major leagues, mamita. Running with Dex. Fat ass black Jesus of the afterlife. The part we go played it cool. Not bad, eh? Where are we? Is this a dream? It'll be alright, V. You'll see. If I chose the corporal ending, then he appears as a hologram with said recycled voice lines, albeit a bit more corrupted. Chica! Finally! Mama told me things come to those who wait. <laughs> Some are even good. Jackie! How... how do you feel? Checking to see if I'm not rotting in some dumpster, like most of the whales, boys. Thing is, the more I say everything's okay, the more I feel like I'm straight up lying. Now back in the game. Alt has taken Johnny and the prisoners of Mikoshi, practically absorbing them to become more powerful or something. I decided to enter the well and live out the rest of my days as a nomad. There is nowhere to run, it's all undone. Everything in Arasaka and Mikoshi burns. The big corp had taken a fat owl against a samurai and her nomad chumbas. I woke up in Pan Am's Thornton, realizing that I'm flat broken and my stuff is gone. You know, this is the nomad life after all. We looked at Night City one more time, and we head south to get away from it all. We took the cyber tank and raced to the border to find the famous Nikocado Autocado smuggling tunnels to pass by. Once we breached and blasted out of there, we're home free, heading to Arizona to do some nomad business. Great, Pan Am. We're going home.
So, I was watching through the clips of this video and started to think, man, there's not enough samurai footage. I bet that someone in the comments already posted, Hey Mace, how come you still have guns in your inventory? Why aren't you showing more gunfights with your sword? Who's ready to party? Rip that tongue out. Come on. Hand over the rifle. Over my rotten meat. Get her! Anyways, it's been a while since I made a proper video on this channel. Been focusing on Lost Legends for two years and at the same time, making an update video related to Malice. I got my hands on that Gwen Stefani beta version, you should check it out. So tune in next time where I revisit my most popular videos, which is Twisted Metal, the black sequel that never was, the definitive edition.